We're back, back motherfuckers, and you know what time it is? <laughs> it sounded like he had echo on that shit. They drink discussions. I got PB and J hanging out with my brother. Let's go. And I'm hungover. Drinking sucks. <laughs> don't drink, people. Yeah, d- don't drink. Alcohol's a, a terrible drug. Um, don't drink. I think pizza just got here. Pizza? Is that why the dogs are going crazy? Yep, I think so. Now, you got PBJ in there. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to keep talking. Um, Make sure you leave a good tip. He can't hear me. Anyways, um, they drink discussions episode number, I don't know. I'm hungover. And uh, life is good. Life is good. Life is hard. Life is beautiful. Life is great. Life is fantastic. Life is terrible. Life is tragic. And you don't have to love all parts of it, but it'd be much easier to love all parts of it. Um, Take it. Take the good with the bad, the bad with the good, the uh, neighborhood with the hood, the suburbs with the um projects. You got to take it all. If you don't take it, then that's your fault. So what? Um, so... Uh, we talked about it before, but the got fuck the were news. You talking to uh, the twenty people that's gonna watch this. Oh, you were talking to the crowd <laughs> while I was gone. You want I me to just sit back here? And you were talking, and I was like, "Who the fuck is he talking to?" <laughs> Casper, what? you got a ghost in your house, dog. We did a ghost tour last night. Oh. Well, f- he's talking about a damn thing, man. <laughs> you, you got shit on your mind. You did a ghost tour. Yeah. Or y'all did a ghost tour. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, let's just start from the beginning of your weekend. So, Wendy's birthday. How did that go? It was good. Friday. Um. Yeah. So Friday, I ended up not riding in the trunk or hiding good. in the back seat. Good. Did you tell her about I, it? I told her. She's like, I'm so glad you didn't do that. <laughs> So for context, people, uh, my wife's birthday was a few days ago. I took off Friday without her knowledge. And I told her I had her a day planned um, to do while I was at work. Uh, She's going to do something for breakfast, and she's going to go do something for um, an activity. (laughs) And I wanted to show up at the breakfast restaurant without her knowing how I got there. So my plan was one of two things. Uh, taking my car over to my workplace and getting an Uber to downtown. But I didn't want to spend the money. I was like, ah. Yeah, that's a, a cool surprise, but I don't really want to spend 20 bucks on that. Or <laughs> I could hide my car somewhere else in the neighborhood. I've given her instructions on where to go and when to be there. <clears throat> I could just hide in the trunk because she has one of those uh, pull, pull handles. So once she gets to the parking garage... Um. I'll just jump out, beat her to the restaurant, and be like, surprise, I'm off work today. <clears throat> but Nate said that was probably a bad idea. <laughs> so many bad things could happen. <laughs> but they didn't happen because we didn't get into a, a wreck. She didn't get pulled over. It would have been perfect. Yeah, or we Am I frozen? got... Yeah, you're, you just froze. But um, also, or you could make a noise readjusting something and hit something in the trunk. And she's like, what the fuck is in my trunk? Because <laughs> you're big, dude. Getting in the trunk is uncomfortable anyways. But being that big, like, there would be a time where you're like, damn, that's why I move my wrist. <laughs> Boom. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then she's freaking the fuck out, like, what is in my car? But, well, I'm glad... You didn't do it in the first place, but I'm also glad that y'all didn't get in the wreck. But how how did it end up happening? You just be like, "Hey, I'm off work. You yep. want to go downtown?" Mm-hmm. And where'd y'all go downtown? Uh, so we ended up having uh, breakfast at this place called Pugin's Porch, uh, like a historic uh, staple in Charleston. Uh, she didn't really enjoy hers. Um, felt like it wasn't uh, that great. Mine was really good. I had a What'd Cuban you get? sandwich. What did you uh, get? Cuban sandwich. It had a uh, pork shoulder and ham. It was really good. Did it have a uh, a sauce on it? Uh, just uh, straight mustard. Uh, nothing special. You eat mustard? Mm-hmm. I love mustard. Have you always? No, it switched. When I was a kid, I loved ketchup, hated mustard, and now I hate ketchup and I love mustard. Wait, so you don't like? What about hot dogs? You put ketchup on your hot dogs? Never, never, no. 
Too sweet. So you don't like ketchup? No. <laughs> too sweet. What? Yeah, it's way too sweet. What? The, are, are you a big fan of hot sauce? I love hot sauce. So you wouldn't do like, ke- because what I do with my french fries is I put ketchup and then I put hot sauce, swirl it around. You wouldn't even do that? Nope. Mustard or deep mustard for fries. Even you do mustard potato. on fries? Fries, yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you last time I ate ketchup. That's crazy. Because me, this didn't happen until I got older, but with me, I don't like the smell of ketchup. But I love the taste of it. But that's crazy. I did not know you didn't like ketchup anymore. I and when did you start like when did you start liking mustard? Uh all this probably happened this which was probably my early twenties. That's crazy. And how okay, so the I I love telling this story because it sounds so gay. But my friend when I was eighteen, I hated pickles and he was eating a pickle and I was like, dude, I don't know how you can eat pickles and he took one out of the jar and he shoved it in my mouth. <laughs> and I took it out, <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. This is what I've been missing. This tastes good. So how was your introduction to mustard to be like, oh, shit, I've been fucking up? I don't know. I don't have a mustard story. That's just, crazy. <laughs> one day I'm putting mustard on fries. I'm like, this is really good. <laughs> that and I'm is like putting crazy. ketchup and mustard on hot dogs. And I was like, this ketchup's fucking it up. Wow. So it's mustard. And the only time I can eat ketchup is if it's uh, spiced. Like, um, I've only had it once, but Wendy's mom had found this, uh, ketchup that had black peppercorn in it and it was really good, but it was That's more of a, a spicy savory. It wasn't sweet. That's interesting. I've never heard of that, but yeah, yeah I put dude. mustard on everything, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, fries, sweet potato fries, everything. That is so fucking Barbecue. strange. I prefer uh mustard base. Like wow. the Carolina style. Now, I still eat the uh, the vinegar base, but I, if I'm using barbecue sauce, I prefer the mustard. Wow. Man. Yeah, that's crazy. The The food I've had most recent that changed when I used to not like it is, um, what is it? Um, Momo cooks it a lot, and it kind of looks like a, doesn't look like lettuce, but that's the only thing I can think of to describe it. Cabbage. Not cabbage. It looks like cabbage. That's what it looks like. Um, salad? No. Son of a bitch. I don't know if she's... I guess Collard she's... Collard greens? Turnip greens? No, but she she cooks it with those. I guess it is cabbage, but I feel like there's another name for it. But it has a little spice. She cooks in a little spice or whatever. Yeah, it stews cabbage. And she puts, like, red pepper flakes in it. Yeah. God, I feel like it has a different name to it, bro. Oh. All right, well, cabbage. I used to hate cabbage, but I I fucks with it now. Because, you know, Momo, especially with me and Randall, she's like, come on, just try it. Just try it one time. And she kept getting on my nerves about it. And finally, I was like, Momo, I'm going to try it. And I came back and <laughs> put more on my plate. She was like, you like it, don't you? I'm like, you were right. I've been missing out. <laughs> No, she got me like that one time. I was a teenager, and uh, I don't like poke salad. And she kept saying, hey, try it, try it. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to like it. Like, I don't even like the smell of it when it cooks. She goes, oh, it just tastes just like turnips. I was like, it tastes, it smells nothing <laughs> like turnip greens, so it can't taste like it. Yeah. So one day she's like, hey, baby, I cooked some uh, turnips, and it's on the stove. I was like, all right. Go. Oh, man. And when I ate it, I was like, those turnips are bad. <laughs> I was like, you didn't do a good job. <laughs> Oh, so you, goes, you didn't like it? She goes, you didn't like it? I said, no. She goes, that's poke salad. I was like, why do you do that to me? She's like, because you weren't going to try it. Oh, like, man. That's hilarious. But yeah, yeah I she's... didn't like it. And I'm glad I didn't like it, because how I liked that, I would have been like, ooh, this is really good. I've never had terms that tasted like this. Bitch, like, mm-hmm. I told you. I've been trying to tell you for years. Yep. But I was like, no. Nah. I didn't like it. I was like, man, these term greens are not good. I don't want any more. Oh, that's poke salad. Man, what? Man, something she did, and she's only done it once, and I don't know why, but she made a red velvet, but she made it in the shape of a pound cake. Bruh, that was the best red velvet I've ever had. I was like, Momo, I was like, you need to start doing this because I love your red velvet. The only thing I would, if I say that I didn't like anything, is it's too much icing, but this pound cake is a perfect amount of icing, and she ain't did it again, but God, that was so good. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
So you did that Friday, or y'all did that Friday. Yeah, so that uh, kicked off Friday morning. And then we went to the uh, art museum after that. And um, I actually took uh, some pictures I'm going to send to you. Um, but uh, it was on, I don't know how to pronounce it, Japonisme? Basically in the late 1700s, I believe, early 1800s. Um, the West uh, being uh, like Western Europe and uh, the Americas. Uh, the wealthy class got really interested and obsessed with uh, Japanese art and started recreating some of it themselves. Uh, some of those prominent figures, uh, I think her name was Mary Smith, was from Charleston. And she also had like a protege that was from here that she taught and um, was also like a prominent figure of the American recreation of it. And what's the protege again? That's like a... Uh, yeah, like a student. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Padawan. Um, first mate, like you're giving this person all your stuff. Um, okay. To train them up. But, so, their art was featured, but then they also uh, had pe- uh, the masters from Japan, their art was featured too. And what blew my mind is, you know this old Japanese art I'm talking about, right, where um, you have, like, the very classic, like, Ihonda-style looking face. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the waves and the water and the lines are a certain way. Yeah. Did you know all that was a stamp? What do you mean? What they would do is they would carve a wood block, they would carve a relief, and carve it in mirror image. And they had several of these blocks, and then they would take ink and mark up the block like you would a stamp, and then they would take it and they would stamp the paper to it. Or they maybe they'd lay the um, stamps facing up, and then they'd lay the paper on top of it so it would stamp the paper. Mm. But they weren't painting it, and they weren't drawing it. That's crazy. (laughs) They were saying, hey, let's carve this medium upside down in mirror image. We're going to paint ink on it. Right. And then we're going to lay paper on top of it because painting has gotten too damn easy. <laughs> and, dude, like this art, like I, I got pictures to send to you, and I'm going to post some of them on the uh, Instagram story, but it's just like, wow. The precision, the lines are so fine and so detailed. That's they crazy. Showed some, um, uh, even before the uh, Japanese stuff, because they were showing stuff from like the 17, 1800s. They showed some German stuff from like the 1500s where they were stamping also. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. It's incredible. It's like, why would you even have that idea? Like, people have been drawing and carving right. and painting. And you're like, I'm going to make a stamp. <laughs> that's so weird. Oh, wow, that's so strange. Your peas are popping, by the way. I don't know I, how you I fix got some it. Pl- I got some plosives going on. Some, some, what's it called? A plosive? Plosive, yeah. That's yeah, funny. I, I, it I starts with a P. You guys, siblings. Siblings. Oh, yeah. I have a, um, I have a, uh, uh, VST. That's a DSer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the pop screen and the little thing you have on yours, the little, it's supposed to muffle those things out. Yeah. When I take it off, I always say that. My thing looks naked. Oh, yeah. Now it has its Khabib hat on. <laughs> <laughs> the Merga Medoff. It's did you, your face. Did you watch the whole episode with um Hotboxing? I did, yeah. That was that a good was, episode. I, yeah, I, I like the part where um, Khabib was basically like, you probably don't remember me coming to your house, do you? And he was like, yeah, man, I put the little hat on. <laughs> I still, do you, do you know what the fuck that hat is? I've never heard it explained. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it has any religious meaning or if it's just fun. I, right. I don't, know. I, I don't know if he's ever talked about it. Yes. And I was hoping that they got to it, like either Henry or Mike was like, "What? What's? What does that symbolize?" But they didn't get to it. Yeah, my favorite part of that uh, episode was something actually that Mike Tyson said. What did he say? So, uh, he was talking about how, yeah, now you've left fighting. This is an age of uh, entrepreneurship for you. And he goes, "Yeah, Mike." He's like, "Business much better than fighting." <laughs> and Mike's like, "I don't know, man. I, I fucking like fighting." He's like, but business does make me go to a hospital a little bit less. <laughs> right. He was, <laughs> yeah, was like, uh, I can't agree with that. <laughs> I also liked how um, Henry asked Mike something. Mike went on a little rant and was like, yeah, man, like, that's such a bad feeling. You know, you've trained for this person. You think you're going to beat this person, and then you lose to them, man. That's such a bad feeling. And Khabib quietly just goes, I do not know this feeling. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's something else I want to know. Um, how many fights has Khabib lost before he got into professional MMA? Like the samba, the wrestling, all that. Like I wonder how much he actually did lose. Yeah, who knows? <clears throat> that's something that's out. Track. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's doc. I'm sure he could find it somewhere, like his record, amateur record or whatever. I mean, I know he's like uh, four and zero with bears. So I mean, <laughs> if, if he lost to a human, who cares? I, I I've heard this before the hot box, but I love how he says, "Um, yeah." And, the bear was biting me, and I told father, it's biting me. He said, bite him back. Bite back. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's a crazy mentality. Man, that's something that Big would say, though. You know, like, we're yeah. fishing. Big is going to pull me in. You better not let it. <laughs> like, right. you're expecting him to take the reel from you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, nope, that's your fish. I ain't you, my fish. You better not let it. Yeah, man. So that was Friday. Um, Are you done with Friday. Yeah, so that was um, all of Friday. Then we came home. Uh, Saturday, we both had work. And then that evening, uh, we went and had uh, lobster rolls at the same place uh, that we <sighs> took you a big two. Man, those come up on my memories. And I'm just like, damn, I want, I want some more lobster rolls from that place. Yeah, it was so good. Um, we actually uh, tried to go to a other, another restaurant. but um, <clears throat> So we got down there right about maybe 630. And we had to be at the tour company for the uh, ghost tour at 8:40, so we're like if we have an hour wait <coughs> take an hour to get food we're gonna have to scarf this food down our face and then be very uncomfortable doing this ghost tour uh so we went over there they were wide open it was like five tables and two were taken so we had lobster rolls and then did the ghost tour um so that was interesting um <laughs> if you don't believe in the paranormal or ghosts like very very cheesy um Almost to a point of like, hey, this is a picture opportunity. Like, see orbs. <laughs> um, but what they do, they take like three or four stories that are true to Charleston and probably true to wherever you're at, and they kind of ghostify them up a little bit. Mm. Um, one I had heard, the other three I had not. Uh, one was on a pirate um, who lived and died here in Charleston. Uh, one was uh, on Edgar Allan Poe, and like a supposed love story while he was in uh, the military here in Charleston before he actually became famous for his writing. <clears throat> but it's an unconfirmed story, so we don't know if it's true or not. And then it was on Yellow Fever and, like, the mass graves that we had around Charleston where people were just dropping dead by the hundreds and they had no choice but to dig a hole and just push people in. <clears throat> Um, and, and just kind of telling ghost stories on that and how the city's supposedly haunted and all that kind of stuff. It was fun, but it was very cheesy. Right, right. What, what, who's it targeted for? Is it targeted towards more like families and kids and shit? Uh, it was PG, so it was family friendly. It wasn't, um, it wasn't adult themed. But I mean, it's right. geared towards uh, tourists that want a history tour with a twist or towards people that like... Um, the paranormal and ghosts maybe get like an opportunity to be a around a haunted place stay at a haunted hotel because supposedly we have a two uh two haunted hotels where you can see um figures from the past or they talk to you or they whistle stuff like that um to the people that are fans of this movie i'm sorry i haven't seen it in forever so don't shoot me but wherever the shining was filmed at so rather it was maine or wherever um they had that hotel open for like a tourist attraction mm -hmm. and I would like to go to that and go to the room number and all that shit. Yeah, for sure. And that'd be cool just because it's in a movie. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, that's a historical theme from a movie, but it's also cool because like, even if it's lame or corny or whatever, you still get historical references from the ghost tour that y'all did. Yeah. It, it was fun, but cheesy. Right, like, right. If we ever did one again, uh, chances are not. But if we ever did, it probably wouldn't be here because I'm sure most of the tour companies probably have this very similar stories. Right. Because that actually kept happening. Like, uh, we would be stopped at, like, a, a landmark, and tour company would be like, oh, shit, let's go down 20 feet so we can tell the story, and they won't hear it. Right. Because everybody probably tells it their own, own right. certain way. So. Even yeah. I had, had to ask this one lady. So we passed them coming into the park. He stopped, and then she uh, continues coming towards us, and she stops, like, maybe 15, 20 feet away. 
but like their voices were competing for volume. So he stops and he's like, "Hey, hey, excuse me." He's like, "We're like competing for volume. We were here first. Do you mind scooting down just a little bit?" <laughs> Very polite. And right. She just was looking at him like, "You motherfucker, this is my <laughs> spot. I've been here for twenty years, and you're one of those." fucking college brats coming through messing my shit up right right that's funny but i sent you a text on this and i haven't heard back from you yet yes anthony kiedis's book scar tissue yes pick it up it's good oh really <laughs> it's a roller coaster yeah i just haven't um i haven't been into reading lately like the past couple of months i i still haven't finished fucking uncle tom Uncle Tom's Cabin. Yeah, the last thing that we did, um, Friday actually, I didn't mention this, but we went to a, a used bookstore that we both really liked. Uh, we got two records, and we got, I bought that book for myself. Oh, so they had it there? Mm-hmm. That's gangster. Yeah. Oh, they have all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And it's just people that donate the books there? Yeah. They sell new books uh, that are marketed. Um but then so they also uh, sell donated books. So you found this one in the in the Old book section. section. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's like five bucks. And wait, I don't know if I heard you. You didn't find it in the used book book section. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah, but they have it. Um, they're they're a huge bookstore, so I mean they have aisles and aisles uh, that are categorized. So this was in the uh, music and music biography uh, section. Gotcha. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Same place where I got this one. Saxophone solos. So they have like music instruction and music biographies all like in one spot. I was about to say, you don't have a fucking saxophone. Like, why do you need to know about saxophone solos? Uh, one really cool thing I heard uh, years ago was that uh, Jaco Pastorius, uh, the famous jazz bassist, would learn like other lines from other instruments like saxophones trumpets but learn them on bass but don't play them like a bass player he'd play them like a saxophone player would but on the bass instrument that's interesting and flea from uh, red hot chili peppers was highly influenced by that and he would learn the similar things because you know he started off playing trumpet he didn't start off playing bass Mm-mm. oh you know that Mm-mm. oh well you'll learn it in the book um their guitar player their first guitar player Hillel slovak actually taught him how to play bass hmm yeah. That's the book I'm gonna read. Is I'm not really big into um, autobiographies, but that's one I also want to read. Is it's Flea's book? I can't remember what it is. It's a it's a cool title like The Kids Are on Acid or something, and mm, yeah. I'm gonna read that. Yeah, I bet it'd be a good companion to Anthony's book because this shit's wild, man. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna give anything away because the f- yeah, I'm not gonna give anything away. <laughs> <laughs> and I want I want to hear y'all honestly talking real on it, and I just chime in, you know, like, cause I don't know if I'm gonna read it, but it'd be cool to be an outside ear looking in. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it. I'm glad that he uh, recommended it, and I'm glad I was able to find it. And I, I thought oh. about it cause it's a thick book, or for oh, like, really? for me, it's thick. Like if it's more than 300 pages, it's like <laughs> this is a chore. <laughs> Because I'm not that I'm not that big of a reader, man. Like this is uh, one of the books I'm on right now is um, a book on yoga by Shrat Joyce, and that's like the book I like. I like that's Dan. That's Dan. Well, let's see how many pages I'm at. Probably like two fifty. <laughs> oh, not even two hundred. Yeah, the epilogue starts on one eighty seven. Oh wow! Oh shit! One eight seven. That's a murder. Murder call. Yep. Yeah, I know that because Ice Cube. I was about to say, we probably learned that from NWA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, Snoop Dogg, 187, Murder Was a Case That They Gave Me. You know he actually wrote that song before he got a murder charge? Mm. He was on The Breakfast Club a few years ago, and, um, you know, they were all riffing about how these rappers are saying stuff and then it's happening, and Snoop Dogg's like, I learned my lesson. He was like, because honestly, he's like, y'all may not know this, but murder was the case that they gave me he was like i wrote that before i ever had a murder charge and then next thing i know i'm in courtroom fighting for my life and from that day from when i got accused of it he was like 
I never rapped about stuff that hasn't already happened because you can rap about it, speak it into existence, and then boom, next thing you know, you're going through it. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't, <clears throat> and I don't know that song very well, but I didn't know he uh, wrote it before to his case. Yeah, man. Yeah, shit's crazy. I, I don't know. I think words are powerful. I, uh, it's it's kind of like what we were talking about before. It's like, um, if Snoop Dogg would have wrote that song and never got charged with, for murder, then that would have never happened. Or, you know, but basically we were talking about like it's speaking stuff into existence. No one knows if it's real because there's no way to judge it, you know? Yeah. But... I believe it because I've spoken things into existence, both negative and positive. But who knows? It could be a all coincidence. There's no way of knowing. And no what's way. What's crazy is you can't follow both strands. So say at every point of decision, however many uh, decisions you can make from that stimuli, mm. you have a road for each one, right? So say uh, someone cuts you off in traffic. You can either ignore it and go this way. You can either react um, negatively and start screaming and yelling and go this way. You can run them off the road and go this way. But if you do this over here, you never know what this over here was going to cause. Exactly. Down the road. Not even just in this situation, but years down the road, that shit is like a pebble in, a, in the pond. It's like it can't, the ripples don't stop. Yeah, and you, you never know. You know, like. If I would if I wouldn't have been there that night, or if this wouldn't have happened, then my life wouldn't have went this way. But it's like you have no way to fucking tell. Like if Big wouldn't have gotten on that motorcycle, you know he he could have ended up killing himself or someone. You don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. Or and we're talking about big decisions. Think about small ones. Like think about you meet a woman that takes you down a really bad path. But what if that morning you wouldn't have brushed your teeth and she would have been like, "This dude's repulsive." <laughs> and you would have never met her. Well, know? never met her, uh, or never or it gotten the chance to go anything. further. Yeah, because your breath smelled bad. Exactly, and it's like you, you. I don't know. I I don't like to look on things that way, just because it, it, you can't change it. So it is what it is. It happened. This is where it's brought you to. What the fuck are you gonna do about it? Can't change it. Can't rearrange it. So there it was. Who's that? Kid Rock, motherfucker. Hey, Kid Rock's Na- name. Um, and Carol. damn thing change. That's a white check white guy. Yeah, he said the N word in that song. I know that blew my <laughs> mind, and he said like with a strong ER. Yeah, he said by some dope. He, she got smacked by some dope dealing nigger. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I I feel like I shouldn't be listening to this. He's, he said that N-word another time in one of his really, really fucking early songs. Like, back when he had the flat top and shit. <laughs> that that one album was a really good one. The uh, Eggs and Grits and Breakfast or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, Brit sa- grits Sandwiches for Breakfast. Man, that was a good yeah. album. <laughs> yeah, that, that album was wild. Let me ask you this. I wish I would say this for the next day drink, but let me ask you this. Do you think that the Beastie Boys don't get mentioned when it comes to top five or top ten in hip hop because they're white, a white group? Like, they don't even get brought up with groups. You talk about NWA, you talk about Dipset, The Locks, you talk about all them, but they don't get brought up. Do you think it's because they're white? Huh. Never even thought about that. And my first instinct before you stopped uh, explaining your question was I don't even think of them as a hip hop group. What do you think of them as? Because they did rock, too. Yeah, I think of, like... Now, this might be splitting hairs, but I definitely think of them as a rock group because uh, they have some pretty, like, really nice rock and roll riffs. But also more like a b-boy group. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, maybe you can say, okay, b boys a subset of hip-hop, but they did it in such a way that I feel like it was different. Like... It didn't feel like pure hip-hop. And I guess that's my thing is it has so many hip-hop elements, and they did stuff that was such a so far ahead of their time. And it's like, I just, I, I don't hear them. And the reason I thought about it is I was driving last, yesterday listening to the radio, and they came on, and I was like, bruh, they were, they were fucking amazing, oh, and they do not phenomenal. get... 
they don't get brought up in the conversation. Like hip hop, rock, b boy. Like I'm sure maybe in the b boy scene they ain't in it, but they don't get brought up in these conversations. Yeah, it's probably like twelve people in the b boy scene, so <laughs> Beastie Boys have to be in the top five, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, man. I, and then I don't... you're like hardcore b boy, and you're like fuck these guys. We don't know. Yeah, don't tech nine. Every type of music. Yeah, I like how Tech Nine. He he was a b boy at first, and um, he he implements that in his music. And it's like I know b-boy music when I hear it, but yeah, I'm not out there breakdancing in. <laughs> and I could be fucking wrong. I just know there's breakdancing, and they sound like music breakdancers would listen to. It I, is b-boy I don't, music. I don't, I don't even know b-boy music. I just made that shit up. So if y'all don't <laughs> like me for that, fuck me and fuck y'all. We all fuck everybody. Yeah, it's fuck everybody, but you were correct. Um, that, But yeah, I was just thinking like, damn, they do not get brought up in the conversation. They... We're doing shit that people do now before anyone, before a lot of people was doing it. Cause you know, Run DMC and Aerosmith did that song and merged yeah. rock and roll and rap. And people have tried to do that since NFL, like Lincoln Park and Jay Z. I thought it was good, but it didn't hit home with a lot of people. Yeah, that should have been way more commercial. Yeah. It was, it was a good album. <clears throat> it um, didn't sound cheesy or corny. No. Man, I was going to say something. And I lost it. Is it I gone? Have, I have no idea. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> that happened to me on the episode, and I still don't know what I was going to say or ask. Yeah, you remember when you were here uh, a couple years ago and you saw those military jets? And like by the time you hear it, it's gone? Mm-hmm. That's how that thought was. It's like, <laughs> that thing, those things are fucking loud, bro. You you still do it down the daily? <clears throat> well, I guess on the basis. I don't know if it's daily. Yeah, it's uh, fairly regular. Um, and you can tell when they're going through like drills. I don't know if they test their flymen or if they get new recruits or I don't know what the rotation is. But yeah, when they start doing drills and stuff, and you have like four or five of them up there all doing flips and weird rolls at the same time, it's loud. So can you even like hear TV? Like if it's they're doing that shit? Because uh, it's loud as, no. huh? Yeah, sometimes no. Like yeah. if they're going like what feels low because of the, the rumble. It's like, if it's a TV show you want to watch, you pause it. If you're talking on the phone, you say, hey, I can't hear you. Please stop talking. Uh, if you're having a conversation, you just wait till it goes away. And he ain't bullshitting because I remember we were outside and we would have to stop talking because it's like, do we really feel like screaming over this shit, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's de- it's not definitely. That's an exaggeration, but it's fucking loud. It you can feel loud. it. Yeah. I don't remember, but does um the shit vibrate? What like, there's a house shake or whatever? No, it's not yeah. that bad. Yeah, I didn't. I remember feeling it, but I don't remember any like glasses shaking or anything. Yeah, so shit's loud. My new obsession is uh ramen. And oh I, yes, and I and I don't know why. Eating or cooking? <clears throat> uh, cooking. Yeah, I want to get really good at making ramen. What what stuff have you been put? Have you put like an egg in it? Like have you been putting different shit in it? Yeah, I actually have uh, some eggs brining right now. Um, <laughs> so I made uh, this little brine liquid. It's uh, tamari, uh, water just for volume, sugar, and um, hon mirin. And I I have no idea what hon mirin is. I was about to say, I have no clue what <laughs> fucking ingredients you just made. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, tamari is a type of soy sauce. I was about to say yeah. Tamari, Homeric. And, and I'm still learning. I'm like two days in, uh, three YouTube videos, so I have no idea what makes Tamari different from just regular dark Kiko Man soy sauce. And you've but already made s- hmm? You've already made some already? Mm? Yeah. Wendy fuck with it? Uh she hasn't uh been hungry when I make it. Mm. But yeah, I got my eggs. I made a uh aroma oil today. Uh so basically I took uh, green onions, um uh, red chili flakes. Uh, dried arbol chilies and fresh ginger, and fried it up real nice in um some vegetable oil. Right to a point where the uh, onions started getting crispy, right before it burned. Uh, drained um off the um the solid stuff, sifted it out, and now I'm gonna use the oil as like a flavoring for the ramen. So ramen I learned has five parts. You have the broth, you have the um. The tare, which is uh, the salty um, part of it. Uh, so like in the cheap ramen, that'd be the salt packet. So mm-hmm. you have the broth. You have the um, the salt and flavoring. You have the aroma oil. 
the noodles, and the topping. And what noodles do you use? Ramen. Oh, so there's actually noodles that are, are called ramen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I guess yeah. that makes sense. Ramen noodles. <laughs> yeah, they're actually ra- uh, ramen noodles. <laughs> but um, there's, I'm sure there's, well, I know there's different brands, but I'm sure there's like different kinds. Like maybe one's thicker. Thicker, thinner, yeah. Gotcha. Chewier, uh, drier, yeah. And I haven't yeah. gotten into all that. I just bought the um, cheap noodles at the H&L uh, Asia market. Um, and how long we, we or I got two questions. How how much can you make? Like, do you make like a big pot of it? Like it's chili, well not chili, but it's chicken noodle soup or what? If Wendy wanted some, yeah, I'd make a, up enough to feed us ser- uh, multiple servings, but I just make two servings. So I make enough for two bowls. And um, how long does it usually take to from start to finish? See, that's what's wild, man. Um, so I'm very new at it. I'm making uh, what they call shoyu ramen, which is just um, your flavoring agent is um, soy sauce. Uh, that's what they call soy sauce and shoyu. But so mine's very simple. It doesn't take very long. Once I have my uh, shoyu made, uh, where I combine a couple of different soy sauces, a couple of different other things uh, in it, uh, let it set overnight, and basically it just changes the flavor. So it's not just a straight soy sauce. It has a little bit more of that umami uh, flavor that they describe. Um, and then I mix uh, in my broth uh, chicken powder, uh, bonito flakes to give a, a chickeny, um, uh, fishy kind of broth to it. Cook my noodles separately. I didn't use aroma oil because I didn't know about that yet. And my topping has either been eggs or scallions. But I haven't had one of my eggs brined yet, so they're soaking in the brine right now. I'm going to try one today. I'm going to try two tomorrow and then try two two days from now, so Tuesday. Because uh, they said brine them for two days. And I want to see how much of a difference it is from like three hours to 24 hours to two days. And see, Man. do I need to prepare it? Like if we're having a ramen dinner with friends, do I need to really brine my eggs for two days? Or is six hours by doing it that morning okay? And what is brining? I've never brined anything. Uh, letting it sit in a, uh, a salty liquid. Oh, okay. I was thinking of vinegar, probably. Uh, yeah, uh, vinegar too. Yeah, salty, vinegary, acidic. So okay, uh, yeah. pickles come from uh, cucumbers being brined. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I almost did that actually. I, and, and the I liquid's guess, brining. Yeah. yeah, I call it soaking. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what soaking is? Have you ever heard of that? What the soaking? Mormons do. Okay, <laughs> so it's I'm gonna get it wrong, but basically they <laughs> they don't have sex, but they have penetration. But it's not like you're fucking. They just literally go in. They stay there until they come, <laughs> and then they come out. <laughs> that is so. It, and just never is, heard of that. The name soaking just sounds disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me like, just get in. Like, we're having a soaking ceremony. <laughs> I'm just going to get in here. and I mean, I guess it's uh, the most religious way to try to have babies. <laughs> that just sounds like extremely uneventful. <laughs> it is very uneventful. Like, God. Yes, yeah, suppo- I think it's Ohio where it's big. Wherever Mormons are big at, I think it's Ohio. And the only reason I don't know about it is because Andrew Schultz was doing stand up and the crowd start talking about soaking. I'm like, dude, that's so fucking na- It's not nasty. Just soaking sounds nasty, but it's weird. Oh, for sure. It's definitely weird. But yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I guess I just called it soaking, but brine is a culinary word for it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, um, you can brine a lot of different things. Anytime you have a pickled something, it's brined. Uh, sauerkraut's brined. Yeah. It's so like uh, when you go to uh, your um, Mexican supermarket and get those uh, tacos that we were talking about a few days ago. Yeah. Do you ever get the um, the pickled veggies to go on top? No, but I've had them. Yeah. So those, those, are, those brined. are brined and something, yeah. Got you. So pickled jalapenos are brined? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, these fucking... eggs are soaking in a, um, a soy sauce brine right now. And is the, not egg white, is the shell still on them while they're brining? Or are you 
No, you, you crack them. You boil them soft, and then you crack them. Okay. I, I actually boiled my first egg last year because I don't eat boiled eggs, but it called for the meal. And I was like, actually, let me eat some some boiled eggs with this. And it was, I don't know, it was so cool, like, fucking cracking the shell on it. I was like, whoa, this just really comes off. Like, I've seen the finished product, but I've never done it myself. Huh. I used to eat boiled eggs like they were going out of style. But, man, they give me such bad gas. Mm. Like, to the point where it's not just like, oh, he's being rude and, like, making the room smell bad. No, like, my stomach, like, doubles over and, like, not. So, like, I, I feel bad. Down. Yeah. I, um, I would eat boiled eggs, but this is something that everyone's going to hate me for. But I would not eat the yolk. I would just eat the egg white of the boiled egg. Throw that nasty yellow bitch away. Mm. Yeah. That has a strong, like, sulfur flavor to it. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it tastes like shit to me. Like, literal shit. Like, it smells, it smells like it, too. Like, <laughs> how often you go around eating doo-doo? I, I, yeah, I've never ate shit before, and I'm sure it would not taste anything like a boiled egg. <laughs> but it smells like a fart. Maybe that's what it is. I've tasted a fart before. That's what it tastes yeah, like. Yeah, you, you can taste farts, for sure. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what it tastes like. Yeah, I mean, because uh, uh, farts typically have a very strong sulfur smell to them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, but, to in- go on. No, I was just going to say, I don't know how I got on this uh, kick, because I haven't been... No, I guess I got into miso a little bit, so I was just wanting, like, simple miso recipes. So, maybe that's why YouTube recommended it to me. But I found this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Maybe We Love Ramen or Ramen King or something, something like that. And I started listening to this guy talk, and he's, like, make it, talking about uh, these Tauntaun men ramens where he, like, makes his broth over, like, an eight-hour period. How he has to make this brining liquid, like, seven days before. And it's like, that's a lot of fucking thought for a, a bowl of noodles. <laughs> right. Which is interesting because me and Wendy were talking about um, this today, and she was talking about it with a colleague of how there's this renaissance in uh, culinary arts, and it's been going on for a while. It's not like it's brand new. But where they're taking these foods that poor people used to eat because that's all they could get their hands on. And now they're switching the game up and, like, they're becoming these culinary masterpieces. Uh, Like here locally, shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits was... Uh, pr- uh, primarily a slave food. Uh, food during that time, mm. and then after even that abolished, it was um just hey shrimp is extremely cheap, grits cost almost nothing, so it was a poor person food. Uh, beyond that, and now it's like <laughs> you go downtown and you're paying thirty bucks for shrimp and grits. Shit is expensive. Fifteen, fifteen for the cheap one. Right. And it's like. Those grits literally don't cost you anything to put those on the plate. Right. And the shrimp are not that expensive. But, um... I've only had shrimp and grits once, and I was not a fan. Uh, I love them. I, I hate when we go to a new restaurant and they have shrimp and grits, because it's like, damn it. <laughs> I can't even look at anything else on the menu, because I know <laughs> I like that. I know right. that's going to be a winner. But it's going to taste just like the one down the street. And it's not going to be a new experience. <laughs> and it's it's going to be the same experience in a new place. Right. So but, you can't um, even look and try to try something new from that place. <laughs> I, it's hard. I look and it's like, shrimp and grits is called my name. And this was only 19 bucks. Man, McDonald's um, pissed me off yesterday. Man, fuck McDonald's. And it's because I put them on a pedestal and I had expectations. But I got there at 1130 and I said, um, can I get a chicken biscuit? And she's like, chicken biscuit? Okay. Wait. I'm sorry, sir, but we stopped serving breakfast about an hour ago. I was like, bruh, about a year or two ago, McDonald's made breakfast all day. All day? Yeah, what you talking about? And I just walked out, and then I went to Arby's and made a sacrifice. This was 11 a.m.? 11.30 a.m. Oh, wow. I can see, like, 11 p.m., like, oh, shit, we just ran out, and the the 2 a.m. truck's not here yet. Right. Wow. Yeah, she said they, they stopped serving breakfast at, I guess, 1030, and felt like I was on fucking Big Daddy. If I had a kid and he was crying because he wanted breakfast, I'd be young. Right, right. Like, no, it's all day. What the fuck are you talking about? 
But yeah, it's uh, crazy that like uh, ramen. When I was reading up on it, uh, obviously Japan, um, but it was the poor people there that uh, made ramen because like noodles are cheap. Uh, it's basically our grits. Like it doesn't cost shit to make noodles. Um, they were uh, eating either chicken or pork, and they were like saving the bones, and they were using the bones to make broth. It's just because hey, we have this animal, we have to use every bit of it. <coughs> we don't want to waste it because we don't know when we're gonna get another one. So we're not throwing anything away. We're using every bit of the usable usable part of the animal, and like they were using very cheap spices. So it wasn't like a a cuisine. It was, hey, we're just not throwing shit out, and this is what came of it. Right. And then you can go to like a five star restaurant and get a bowl of ramen that might cost a hundred something bucks. Yeah, I've never, I've never, um, not thought about it. I guess I've never heard that concept of folks taking food that was mainly for poor people or couldn't afford shit and then making it into a delicacy. All right, pimento cheese. <laughs> Growing up, you, you ate pimento cheese because that's like the nicest cheese you can get. Right. It's like American slices or pimento. Right. <laughs> and now pimento cheese, like you can go uh, somewhere downtown and get like a stack of fried green tomatoes that are topped with uh, melted pimento cheese. That's just going to be an appetizer that's going to cost you 10 to 12 bucks. That's crazy. Those tomatoes are like, what, a dollar a piece? And that cheese is probably free. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're giving pimento cheese away. That would be like taking powdered milk that's, you know, from the government that is given to the project housing, <laughs> taking powdered milk that's disgusting and no one likes and making it into a delicacy. And now it's ten twenty dollars $20 for a gallon or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. That would be like that. That's crazy. I guess it's smart. I don't know. I guess uh, pimento cheese brands and ramen brands and restaurants and all that shit. Super happy about it. Like, oh, man, sure. <laughs> y'all eating this food that was made for poor people and with the shrimp and grits anyways, it's like, we ain't paying this much for it. Like, <laughs> y'all are fucking, uh, what are they doing? Paying like something, some amount per pound of shrimp and paying something, some amount for grits and then just fucking spiking the price so they're getting paid. Yeah. And then, I mean, uh, they give you like eight shrimp. <laughs> so right. Talk about, you get grams worth of shrimp and, and then you gotta get grits and you're paying like 20 bucks for it. And it's like, they do that with everything because that's how you make money. You know, you buy something at, um, Low. at, uh, what's it called? Um, wholesale. You say you buy something at wholesale, you sell it retail, sell it cheaper, so then, you make, so then you make money, and uh, that's what you're supposed to do, but the crazy money, the, money, money. the crazy thing that they're doing is doing it with shit that don't cost that much at all. Yeah, and I ain't hating their game, but it's just... Oh, hell no, I do what you do. It's, it's funny, a, though. It's very funny. But no, um, I don't know how long I'm going to be obsessed about ramen. I don't know how good I'm going to try to get at it, but I was just like, huh. It's a real cheap food, so like I can play around with it. Like I'm not going to go play around with brisket all the time because, shit, I don't have a reason to cook 10 pounds of meat and spend 50 bucks on it every weekend. But yeah, fuck that. I can fuck around with ramen because, well, a bottle of soy sauce is like four bucks and the noodles are like a dollar fifty. So it's just kind of my fun little weekend thing I've been playing around with. I think I've had like, I've had four bowls of ramen this weekend and I think I'm going to have two more today. Hell yeah. I haven't been cooking here lately. I love cooking. Oh, me too. But I ain't, I won't know. If I had my own kitchen, I'd be cooking all the time. But sharing a kitchen, you don't have like everything in your spaces or whatever. So we talked about before, but to all the Oakwood peeps that ever used to go to Waffle House in Oakwood, and you know the cook David. He got cancer. I don't know when he got cancer, but it spread and he died yesterday. And if you know gang, if you know David, he was gangster as fuck. So rest in peace, David. And I'll say nationwide, if you're a trucker, 
that has ever come through North Georgia, you probably know David because I got this crazy story of uh, this guy. Um, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, Waffle House is like a family tradition. He's like, my granddad worked at Waffle House. My dad and both my uncles worked at the Waffle House. I worked at Waffle House. Like, it's a rite of passage to work at Waffle House in uh, the Davidson family. I was like, interesting. But he said he met a trucker one time coming from California to the East Coast. And he was so excited that he got to cross through North Georgia because he had heard of David's cooking. <laughs> that's crazy. And it's like, that's some intense shit. Because the people that aren't from the South, when they come to it, if they do get the chance to experience Waffle House, either love it or they think it's the most disgusting thing they've ever had. They don't understand it. That's they don't understand it because I love it. <laughs> I love it. My favorite David story, and I think if he were still here, he'd like me sharing this. <laughs> is we had played a, a show and gone to the Waffle House afterwards. And uh, he was there, and uh, Francis was there. Uh, rest in peace to Francis as well. And um, I had played my order for food and just kind of hang out talking with the buds. But I'm facing uh, the direction of the cooks while their backs were to me. I see David, he has a pack of frozen hamburgers in his hand that for some reason were open. They didn't have the plastic wrap around them. He drops them on that greasy Waffle House floor that they've been walking on all day, probably mopped it twice. Picks them up, looks around, sees that he was safe, kind of wipe, wipes them off a little bit and throws them back in the freezer. And I was like, I hope that ends up on my plate at some point, whether in the form of a burger or chili, because that's going to taste so damn good. Hell Yeah. Get some of that that Waffle House dust, grease, dirt, and grime on it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's how Waffle House is supposed to be. Well, I actually don't like going to the corporate stores because they're so clean. They they're are. So, they're so bright, and the people are very polite. Yes. I want it to be bad lighting. I want it to be a bunch of bunch of drunks in there, uh, and not not working. I mean, in, as patrons. <laughs> I want the people to be slightly edgy. Like, I don't want them to be real kind. Yeah, that's how it was today because I went today. That's how I found out that he died yesterday. And I went today and um, I was sitting by myself but kind of close to the bar. And this dude was asked the waitress. He was like, hey, can I, uh, can I get some coffee? And she was like, yes, but I got to deal with these people first. And uh, what did she say? She said, um... She's like, I got to deal with these people. Basically, that's what she says. Like, I got to deal with these people first. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you tell him. Right. <laughs> like, if I was like, <laughs> it was like, yes, honey, let me get that. And like, no, no, no. I want you to be slightly rude. Yeah. If I was at Longhorn and that happened, I'd be like, damn, that waitress is an asshole. <laughs> but I'm at Waffle House, man. Like, <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't have no kickback, you know, like he wasn't like. Uh, well, I've been out of coffee for five. No, nah, he was just like, all right, <laughs> I understand. And they were busy. Like, that's why I drove 30 minutes out the way is I'm hungover. Oh, my God. I keep getting notifications from Facebook. I don't even fuck with Facebook, but it keeps making a noise in my headphones. But I was hungover and I really wanted Waffle House. So I drive to the closest Waffle House and it is packed like. If there was five or six more people, it would have been like a line out the door. And I was like, bruh, it's 1030 on a Sunday. Aren't y'all supposed to be in church? But it was definitely a church crowd by the way a lot of people were dressed. So I drive and finally get to another Waffle House. And it was super fucking packed too. But luckily I got seated pretty soon. But uh, yeah. And now I am craving Waffle House again. So once we get off the phone, I'm going to go get some hash browns all the way without onions or tomatoes or mushrooms respect i like their hash brown bowl shout out to uh john simones for uh teaching me about the hash, hash brown bowl we were just actually talking about that a few days ago he texted me he's like man he's like you remember that night up in florence when i taught you all about that hash brown bowl and it blew your mind i was like dude I was like, i've been sharing that with everybody like i abandoned my childhood favorite and stopped getting the omelet I didn't eat the omelet for a year and a half, two years. I forgot. I used to eat omelet. omelets a lot, too. Oh, for me, every every single time is ham and cheese omelet, and the only thing I would change is do I want hash brown or not? Yeah, I start eating 
omelets as an adult from Waffle House, but I remember, only reason I remember is because, I guess I said it cute, I don't know, but Francis asked me what I wanted, and I said waffles and bacon, and it was either Peter or Victor, and they're like, waffles and bacon, and that became the joke of the night, so I was like, fuck it, I went home and changed my MySpace name to waffles and bacon. I didn't know why you had that nickname, but I, or that MySpace name, but I remember that. Oh, in the Oakwood fucking Waffle House, and they thought it was the funniest thing, that that's what I wanted. Creepiest thing uh, that ever happened at a Waffle House. You just mentioned Peter and it triggered this memory. We were at the Flowery Branch Waffle House, which I didn't go to very often. It just felt kind of out of the way, like it was there by itself next to a Kroger. It mm-hmm. just felt strange. That's um, weird. But me, him, and this guy named Brian from high school were there. And the server... For some reason, immediately, like, was mag- magnetized towards Brian. Like, she wanted to only talk to him. She was there to serve me and Peter, but she was there to see Brian. Love the guy for some reason. Brian said he wanted his thing with no pickles. She goes, I can't do it with no pickles, but I'll put the pickles on the side. And he's like, okay, whatever, as long as I don't have pickles on my sandwich. So she brings out these pickles and puts them on a napkin. And she says, I want you to have these pickles. <laughs> and he was like, excuse me? She goes, I need you to eat these pickles. And like push them, pushes them closer to him. And she walks away and we're all like, bro, <laughs> she may have roofied those pickles. <laughs> put them in your pocket or something. Like remove them from her sight and tell her that you ate them. Yeah, that's and she came weird. back and checked on them. She's like, how were those pickles? He's like, those were the most delicious pickles I ever had. I don't even like pickles. And did y'all ever find out the reason? No. No, we threw those pickles away. That's so weird. Yeah, it was that, strange. That's it was strange. creepy. It wasn't like, hey, like, you should really try pickles. Maybe if you try right. these pickles, you'll like them. Right. No, I need you to have these pickles. Yeah, because it's, I mean, the first red flag was... I can't do it with no pickles, but I can put them on the side. <laughs> like, that's weird in itself. Yeah, she was strange, man. It was a weird experience. Man. Yeah, I remember I've sent my food back uh, with Francis twice. And it's if I found a hair in the food, I wouldn't send it back. But if I found two or more, that was my limit of, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got to. I'm like, I'm 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 sorry. There's a couple hairs in here. You gotta gotta go cook them back up. But Dude, me and me and Vic were at the Dawsonville Highway one uh, one night. <clears throat> I think it was after work. We had work laying. Went to the Waffle House. He got a bowl of grits. Bro, it looked like somebody had shaved their face in that bowl yeah. of grits. <laughs> <laughs> it was just hair after hair after hair. It's like man. He he sent it back. They were like, "You want another one?" He's like, "I'm good." I think, <laughs> I, I, think I think he was just like. I, I'm I'm tapping out. Yeah, I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at a certain point, it's like you see a roach at a waffle house. Like, oh, 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 roach! But yeah, you start seeing a couple. It's like, hey, we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta slide. <laughs> yeah, this is a extra experience tonight. <laughs> yeah, like we know that how waffle house is and what it's supposed to be and what to expect, but there's a limit. <laughs> yep. You know, there is definitely a limit. Hell yeah! And it's funny, dude. Like. And this is probably just biased because I'm um, from Georgia and it's like whatever. But the Waffle House out here, I don't feel like it's as good as the Waffle House back in Georgia. Really? Yeah. That's I, Now that I think, well, I might have had Waffle House in Florida. But now that I think about it, if I have, I don't think I have I had a Waffle House in another state. I'll tell you what sucks here compared to what's in Georgia is Zaxby's. Really? Yeah. I think I've had it twice, and Wendy had. I think she tried it two or three times. We'll that's, never eat Zaxby's here in Charleston. It's garbage. That's crazy. Like the service is garbage. They get your order wrong. It takes forever to get the order, and then the food tastes like garbage. Wow. And that's I just something. Won, I, like there's a, a couple that we've tried. I was on Zaxby's for a minute. Didn't um one of the Cleveland boys from back in the day? Like I don't remember who it was, but they created like a sandwich or a meal for like the Cleveland Zaxby's or whatever and it got on the menu. I can see Brandon doing that. 
It wasn't Brenda. I want to say it was uh, who was the vocalist for the day? Is Chris? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think I it can was see him. Chris doing that too. Yeah, I, I don't remember what it was, but I remember them talking about it. It's like, yeah, it's on the menu in the Cleveland one. I don't know if it got to any of the other chains, but see, we should uh, get Brandon on. Uh, talk about his uh, Twitch uh, streaming and all his stuff that he's doing. I think he has like a reaction channel on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I um, I follow him on Instagram, so I can hit him up. Yeah, Brandon's hilarious, man. He's a yeah, cool he's always been a nut. He, he always has been. He's a trip. <clears throat> I always think about guys like that, like that are just out there. I'm like, I would like to have your mind for one day just to see how it ticks. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm good without it. <laughs> I am too. That's why I want it just for one day. <laughs> Just one day just to see what's going on in there. You know, like I was watching this uh, ramen guy, and um, he was describing like these concepts that he was trying to teach his audience. And the way he was doing it, very highly entertaining. But I was like, he would be way too much to hang out with. Mm. I've super seen those. extra. Super yeah. extra. But also super nerdy. like Very smart. Uh, tons of details that he just was throwing out there off the, off the top. But there's yeah, this like, one his delivery was wild. There's this one dude that Mark showed me yesterday and I've seen one of his videos before and I I can't stand the dude. He did have some funny things that we watched, but um just a, like he's so extra and he always does faces like and it's like, bruh, like I get you're doing it mainly for kids, but it's also like grown folks are watching your stuff and it's hard to make it through. But it's not for me. I don't understand it. It's not for me, so I'm not gonna watch it. I'm not gonna go leave a negative comment under it. I'm like, gonna leave a negative comment and write a blog. <laughs> right. I'm just gonna keep it pushing. Like it's not for me. Now, I can't believe I, he made those faces. Is he insulting my intelligence? Exactly. <laughs> so people are crazy. Man. This guy should know his audience. He has bad branding. Exactly. Like if it's not for you or you don't understand it, keep turn it the push. channel. Turn the channel. It's that turn easy. Turn the channel. You got up or down. Change the channel. Yeah, man. People are hurt. People hurt people. And when you're bored, hurt, sad, you want to leave a negative comment. So you try to make other people feel the way you feel. Yeah. Yeah, because if it's something where it's a uh, content that's causing like real harm, then leaving a negative comment is not the way to go about it. It's like, hey, we need to start a rally around this to either boycott it or have it removed because it's gonna because it's dangerous. But yeah, just just because you don't like it, it's like okay. Well, there's certain things I don't like, but I just don't pay them attention. You heard about the baby getting canceled? The baby? Yep. I don't think he cares. He <laughs> does. I promise you, he does. I'll tell you the timeline. So I was gonna say he's so damn rich, like he probably no just, uh, because drift off into the limelight. Because he literally got canceled. Um, he's gonna bounce back from it. But he cared, I promise you, because at Rolling Loud, he was doing a roll call, so um, doing some crowd interaction, and he was like, if, uh, he said like four thing, four questions, but the two that piss people off is, if you don't have AIDS or HIV or any of those other sexually transmit diseases that kill you in two to three weeks, put your hands up, or put your cell phone lighter up. And then if you weren't sucking a nigga's dick in the... Or if you're not a nigga that was sucking another nigga's dick in the parking lot, go and put your phone up. So the LGBTQ plus A community, and they were real upset because... What was the context of this? Why did, why did he make those uh, terrible comments? It's the same thing of you got $100 in your pocket, put your phone in the air. And he, he just did it with the... If you, if you're not sucking dick in the parking lot and you don't have HIV or AIDS that's going to kill you into the... He was just doing... doing but he he, went, he, he said so the wrong thing. it was thing. just at his show. Yeah, it was, it was at Rolling... Oh, I don't know if you know what Rolling Loud is, but it was at a festival. That's crazy. And what people were so mad about is, one, who cares if you're gay? You know, and the second one was... He's spreading misinformation about HIV and AIDS because it's not a death sentence anymore. So people were going crazy on Twitter and then you start having famous people chime in. So he released a music video and at the end of the music video, he basically, it was a, a note and it basically said, 
I apologize for what I said, but um, we got to stop fighting hate with hate. <laughs> and like the hate was in the in the gay pride rainbow colors or whatever. And so it's basically uh, fuck you. Like I'm sorry that you're offended, but I said what I said to fuck you. And so uh, people get more mad at that. And then um, he releases some blanket apology on Twitter, and it's basically like. Look, the internet soft. Y'all are a bunch of bitches. So then, where he gets canceled is Lala Palooza makes a post with the baby's comments. We don't stand by, so we're taking them off of the festival. And then seven other festivals <laughs> dropped them. So he comes out with this big ass apology that you could tell was written by an intern at his label. <laughs> and it's like, oh, he cares now. <laughs> now that the money's being taken away, he cares. Oh man! Hey, Martin Luther King said, "You can hit them with the social stuff, and at a certain point they'll give in. You hit them in their pockets, and that's when they get defensive. That's when that's when he <laughs> that's when he was like, fuk they just <laughs> they're taking my money away. This is the main way I make money. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't mean anything I said, yeah. but I did like how." Because, of course, it wasn't written by the baby, you can tell. But I do like how kind of the, um, the you know, intentions of the message, it was like, look, I did, I did misspread or I did spread misinformation. Um, I need to be educated, so blah, blah, blah. And I don't remember who it was, but someone was like, maybe Miley Cyrus or someone was like, yeah, um... I don't know. Basically, she was on his side and was like, look, he is ignorant about this. Let's stop cussing him out and let's actually inform the world of HIV and AIDS. Can You know, if you have that, you can take a medicine, blah, blah, blah. So let's give the world information and let's also give this man who's ignorant. Let's give him information. Let's stop yelling at him, cussing him out. But, um, yeah, once those festivals start dropping, he starts shaking in his boots. Yeah, I want to say uh, one thing, too, and then kind of uh, transition. But um, to say what I said about King, that's not to equate the baby with um, the resistance that the civil rights faced. Obviously, two completely, totally different things. Right. But uh, the the idea is the same that when it's just, oh, they're going to take me off their, uh, their platform. All right, cool. Oh, shit. Now I'm going to have to like find a different way to pay my mortgages. Right. Fuck. Now, now people's items are open. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's always two ways to handle it. Um, I think in a case like this, it'd be a prime opportunity to, uh, educate people, educate the world. And I wouldn't say he's necessarily just ignorant. Uh, one thing that uh, bothers me is that in hip hop still like there's a, a homophobia that just persists and it drives me crazy. It's like, you know, what it's like to be marginalized. Why the fuck are y'all doing this to the gay people? Leave them alone. What they do to you? Yeah, it doesn't piss me off. Um, but it it is uh, it's like you can tell that the stigma is trying to be broken, but there's not much progress being made. And I think there will be progress over time, but it's like um, C Mac the Loke on Five Five Crip. He um, <laughs> he has a whole rant because. Uh, he's this dude's hilarious. I've told you about him, but um, Adam asked him on the first interview they did. He goes, "So what's something about C Mac the Lope that we may not know?" And goes on for a little bit. And Adam's like, "Do you like Lil Nas X?" No, and he was like, "Um, C Mac is one that brought it up." He's like, "Oh, he's like that Lil Nas X dude that he did that song with Miley Cyrus's dad." Yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus is like, man, he had me jumping up and on the old town road. And Adam's like, damn, bro, that's crazy. He's like, I wouldn't think you'd be into a gay artist. He said, oh, cuz gay? No, <laughs> we ain't know that shit. We ain't. And it's like, it's hilarious to watch. And I'm yeah. sure as a gay person, that's not the funniest thing to watch. But it's hilarious because it's like, he's he is who he is. He doesn't care about getting canceled. He is who he is. He's going to say what he... And it's like, that's that's where it's it's the, the stigma. That's where 
don't know it flatlines. There's not going to be any growth. Is because you still have people like C Mac that grew up in an environment where gay people. It, the way he explained it was, if you're gay, you do what you do, but don't bring that shit over by me. But if I see a gay person in the streets, I'm not going to beat his ass. I'm just not going to hang out with him. But that's how he was growing up. So how can you take someone that was growing up that way and has other friends that were growing up that way and they happen to be rappers and to just kill it? So I guess that's why it doesn't piss me off because it's like, that's hard to kill. But like you said, it's like, bro, you've been marginalized. You've been oppressed and... They're going through the same shit, just with a different thing, and you're cutting them down. Yeah, it just sucks. Um, it does. And one 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 artist I wish uh, wasn't taken the way he was is Macklemore, because I know people that are like true to like hip hop culture. It just thought he was corny. He was just another corny uh, white dude doing hip hop. He, he is wasn't corny. like Ritz. He wasn't like Yellow Wolf. Not even the same conversation as Eminem. But he was speaking some really good stuff. But that's the thing is if you watch a movie with a good plot, but the movie's garbage, <laughs> it's yeah. like, man, that had a really positive point. But Kai ain't watching that shit again. Or even worse, when you have a really good uh, actor in a movie that sucks. Mm, yeah. And it's like, Morgan Freeman, bro, why'd you take this script? So that's, that's how I feel about Malcolm Moore because I'm the same thing. I think Malcolm Moore is super corny. But when the the songs I have heard, he's speaking some positive shit. Like, hell yeah, I would much rather my 14-year-old child listen to Mac- Malcolm Moore so he's not asking for a gold chain for his birthday and he's like, hey, can we go thrift shopping? You know, like, he's speaking positive shit, but God, it came across so corny, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Dude, after finding this story yesterday, it's not a Goodwill-level thrift, but really nice threads for cheap. I might be done with big stores, bro. I'm for the most part done with them, but um, my main thing is casual dress clothes. I'm not finding a lot of pants in thrift stores and shoes. I'm I'm still going to be uh, super materialistic when it comes to shoes, always. But yeah, thrift stores, you can you can fucking live in a thrift store and never have to go to a fucking Ross or um, Walmart or Kohl's again. Yeah, I used to. like um, used to do that all the time in my late teens, early 20s, but just got away from it. But also, where we lived didn't have a, a big selection. Like, we'd drive down to Atlanta for it. And thrifting, thrifting does take more work because in the mm-hmm. Kohl's, everything's set up you... Oh, I want college. Okay, but thrift store is set up too, but it's you got to search, you know. Yeah, well, you go to like a a Kohl's, a a Target, something like that. Uh, J.C. Penney, if you're looking at uh, like your designers in the mall. Um. Yeah, they're gonna have like the classic styles of today. They're gonna have the classic colors that are hip and popping. They're gonna have most sizes. You go to Goodwill, it's like, <laughs> you don't know what you got. You have is, no Is this clue. the Goodwill that carries, like, all the weird, like, 70s trousers that were very, like, wide in the hips and, like, make you look, like, very square and boxy? Or is this the stuff that came in 10 years ago so you're not out of style, but you're, like, borderlining about to go out? Um, like, I don't know. <clears throat> and that's what's cool about thrift stores because you go into a Kohl's or something – you kind of know what you want and kind of know what you're going to get. A thrift store, you have no clue. You might know what you want or what you're looking for, but you have no clue what you're going to get. Like, yeah. It's so so such an array of random shit that, yeah, I, 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 I fucks with it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to be checking this place out on the reg. Um, like I said, I got those uh, J. Crew pants. I uh, got this shirt. I don't know who it is. It's... Uh, some designer um but they had some really cool boots i saw down there but i was like uh i should probably like hold off <laughs> come on <laughs> like, bro these i, I don't want to go rage shopping since i haven't been able to shop in a year and a half <clears throat> these boots are made for walking and that's just what they'll do one day these boots are gonna walk off over you hey i got a snake in my boots Get these motherfucking snakes off, off my motherfucking, motherfucking plane. plane. I 
I've never seen that movie. I Me don't neither. Wanna watch it. You say you don't want to? Don't want to. I kind of want to just for the comedy aspect. But I just know it's going to be so bad. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to watch an hour and a half or two hours of just this. It's such a terrible movie. That's, that's um I guess that's a good example of a great actor in a shitty movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Because I think that's probably like the only part of the movie that anybody ever talks about. Yeah. I wonder how many times he said fuck or motherfuck in that movie. Yeah, I don't know. Have you? Oh, um, how do you? Actually, let me ask you this first. Have you? When you were watching Dexter, did you, did you finish all of it? No. Oh, okay. Uh, well, never mind. M- me and Dexter have very strange relationship, and it's not even worth discussing. Hmm. Well, yeah, they're coming out with a new season. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, or they're I, um, revamping it. I started watching it back. Uh oh. Well. I guess I ain't too excited about this because it's it's good. It's nothing I would recommend to anyone because it's not amazing. But if you find it on your own, I think you would probably think it was good too. But um, Miss Pat has a, a sitcom. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah, I like Miss Pat. Um, She's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen a whole lot of her stand up. Um, I saw that little bit she did for Netflix when it was like a um, uh, a series where it was like her and Joey Diaz and like. Um, up, uh, Big J o- Okerfeld and somebody else. Um, she had like an eight minute segment or something like that. But her on Joe Rogan's podcast, I didn't even know who she was. Yeah, I'd never heard of her. But he's like, "Hey, I got comedian Miss Pat." I was like, "Okay, I'm driving two hours. I listen to it." And man, she's hilarious. Yeah, that's how I found out about the sitcom. Is um, she was just on Rogan last week with uh, oh, okay, yeah, her writer, um. For the for the TV show, and uh, she was once again cracking me up. <laughs> her 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 personality is just so it's comical in itself, and like what the things that she says, it's the phrases, and I'm sure these are phrases she's always said. But um, Rogan was uh, she was like Rogan, where's that play? She was like, I I I sent you the pilot episode. And you were on vacation somewhere. Where where were you? Start with a C or something. I don't know. It's, it's where rich white people go. Birds got wings. Or birds don't have no wings but still fly. <laughs> and Rogan's like, what? <laughs> He's like, wait, let me stop you. What are you talking Birds. <laughs> and like, just the, you know, just the dumb shit she says. Like, it just flows off the tongue. And it's like, gah. She's hilarious. And she's one of those people I'd be afraid to hang out with because it's like, oh, I've already heard her say this before, you know. But seeing it on the episode, it's like, bro, she's so funny. Yeah, she was also funny on that um, thing that uh, Burt Kreischer did where he, like, hung out in the cabin for a week or whatever it was. Oh, you told me about that, but I never watched any of them. Yeah, so I it's hard to tell how much of it was uh, him trying to sell a story for Netflix versus how much of it actually happened. But the way he set the story up was he was stressed out. He was doing too much work, uh, working on all these tours, working on new jokes, working on a new special. And his wife was, dude, you just need to chill. You're stressing yourself out. You're stressing me out. You're not good for anybody right now. Like, you just need to chill out. So I was like, all right, what if I went up to a cabin just by myself and I just hung out for a week? Like, I just recuperated, rejuvenated, and came back. Well, it turns into that. To him inviting like all his friends up there, so like he invites Miss Pat. I think he invites Joey Diaz. Um, I think he said Donnell was there. Yeah, Donnell um, Rollins. Yeah, yeah. Donnell was there. Um, and there was somebody on with Donnell. I can see his face. Uh, black male comedian, taller, uh, like high fade afro, but I can't think of his name. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> he was hilarious. And Donnell, like, I don't think Donnell was happy about it. Because, like, he looked at uh, Bert and was like, we're no longer friends. And it looked <laughs> like he meant it. <laughs> I'm so, I'm, I know we've talked like, about this. This shit ain't cool, man. He's like, I'm not into shit like this. And you know that. He's like, we're no longer friends, Bert. He's like, when I leave here, I'm never talking to you again. I know we've talked about this, but he, he, did the sa- he does the same shit to Rogan. He did the same shit to, or I guess he still does the same shit to his co-host, but... <laughs> Don now he just gets so mad and aggravated and I can't tell if he's ever joking or not. <laughs> yeah, he, it it was funny but it was like man, this is a raw moment called on camera like he's not happy. 
because he got shot in the hand supposedly, and he kept explaining it to Rogan, and he'd be like, "You don't fucking believe me." You don't fucking believe I got shot in my fucking hand. And Rogan's like, dude, I believe you. I never said I didn't believe you. Yeah, but the way you just dismiss that man, you're acting like you don't believe it. And I'm just like, is he being serious or is he joking? Like, yeah, does Joe know he's joking? Like, is that part of his character? And he's just like, yeah, I'm going to do this and nobody's going to know. And I'm just going to make you look like an asshole. Yeah, and maybe all his friends know that's who he is. And say, like, oh, Donnell's joking again, being jokingly being an asshole. Or is he just an asshole? <laughs> I just like how when uh, Dave came on at the end of that episode and Donnell would do that, Dave would let him have his part. Yep. And he just talked about what he wanted to talk about. He was so dismissive. He was like, I'm not paying that shit any attention right now. Bro, he's been dealing with that man since the fucking Chappelle days, so I'm sure he knows how to deal with Donnell. Yeah, Donnell go on his full rant. Dave's like, yeah, man, that's real nice. But, Joe, I'll tell you about that time that we <laughs> – Oh, man. I mean, um, you've been friends with someone that long. You know, that's like a Peter or Victor, right? You've been friends with them that long. You know how their personalities are. It's like, oh, let me go on and let him get his piece off because if I interrupt him, he's going to say, all right, get your piece. All right, now let's talk about what we were talking about right, <laughs> before you right. interrupted us. But you were saying, oh, um... You were talking about Miss Pat going to Chrysler. Yeah, I've um I've never seen any of her stand up. She does a little monologue before each um episode on the sitcom, Miss Pat's House or whatever it's called. But um Yeah. Uh never seen any of her stand up. And that's that's one of those things that I got is like I'm afraid to see her stand up because I love her so much on Rogan that I'm like, God, what if her stand up sucks and I don't like her as much anymore. That happened me, happened to me with uh, Whitney Cummings. Um, I had never heard of her again. Hey, I have comedian Whitney Cummings on the podcast. Check it out. Hilarious. Whitney's a f- had me fucking rolling around. She's also um, very knowledgeable on like pets and like is basically a dog whisperer. Really cool stuff. She fucking she was in Texas and was moving roadkill off the side of the or putting it on the side of the road so the buzzards and other animals could eat it. Like, that's crazy. Like, that's an animal person. <laughs> yeah. But watch your stand-up, and I was like, apparently she's good because the crowd is losing their shit. But I am not her target audience. I didn't find it funny at all. Well, you like you like the stand-up that I showed you, um, the one with the robot, uh, the sex robot or whatever. I, I'll tell you that. I forgot about that. Yes, that was so. a good. That was a good uh, special. But that was like two years after I had uh, found her because gotcha. I, I didn't like her for a while. That one actually did change my mind. Gotcha. Yeah, that one actually did change my mind. That that one was actually really good. That thanks was a for, good. Thanks for bringing that up. I forgot about that. That might be worth uh, rewatching. One of my something I still think about is if a dude calls me like champ or boss or whatever, I think back to that bit where she was like. Yeah, guys have all these names to big up their friends. She was like, but with girls, it's like, what's up, slut? What's up, whore? What's up, bitch? <laughs> it's like all degrading shit. Right, that's weird. Yeah, but yeah, that, that was a good one. That was a, that's the only thing I've seen from her. Um, Have you uh listened to Billy yet? I have not. Damn, son. And I think the reason why I haven't yet it's because I don't have a streaming uh, platform that's uh, ad free, and I don't want it to be interrupted with ads. You don't own um, your YouTube music isn't ad free. I ain't paying for that. Oh yeah, yeah. I hate fucking <laughs> like I'll I'll be uploading you know something to our channel right, and then I'll just stay on our YouTube and forget and go to watch something, and a fucking ad pops up and it gets me every time because. I don't see ads anymore. I'm like, oh, yeah, he doesn't have YouTube Premium. No. Or Red, whatever it's called these days. Yeah, I don't even know how much it costs. It could be, like, really stupid, dumb, cheap. I've spent that money anyways. but It's just like, it's nine ninety nine a month. Yeah. I mean, I watch a good bit of YouTube, but a lot of the channels I watch either aren't uh, monetized or they're monetized in a way that the uh, ads on uh, bookend it, so... Yeah, I got to sit through 20 seconds of ads, but then it's uninterrupted for an hour. And then 20 seconds of ads at the end. Yeah, I but. can't do it because I, a lot of times I listen to YouTube when I'm going to sleep. 
and you can't listen to to it um in the background. So you gotta keep your phone screen on. So it's like, yeah, I'm because you don't get that many more perks with YouTube Red. Like that's the two big ones. There's no ads, and you can turn your phone off and do shit in the background nice. or have it in the background. Yeah, uh, having it in the background would be nice. Uh, I do love saying YouTube is going to bed, and how I get around the um, the screen is I take my uh, brightness and I turn it all the way to the lowest setting, so it's pretty dang dark. And then I lay it on like a piece of cloth, uh, so like the light doesn't shine out from a hard surface like uh, the floor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I still have a uh, complete darkness, no blue light, but but your uh, phone stays on the whole time, mm -hmm. like the phone screen, yeah. yeah. And I fall asleep well before the video ends because I usually pick like a two to three hour video. So, so once once the I, video is done, your phone times out and goes mm -hmm. to sleep? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I wake up with my phone screen off. Because I was going to ask you, is your phone fucking hot when you wake up? Oh, yeah, it would be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you ever picked up your phone and it was like burning hot? Like has your phone ever like shut down because it said it's too hot? Mm -hmm. That shit's crazy how hot it gets. Like summertime, I accidentally like leave it in the sun, like on the picnic table or something. And it's weird, man, because you can have all sorts of items on the table, and that will be the hottest item. Man, so like, can't fucking. Even put it in your hot. pocket. It feels like it's gonna burn your skin through your pocket. Yes. And it's like it's a phone. Like, was it uh, was it a sun magnet? Like, what the fuck's going on? It's something, man. I don't understand this science. I don't understand any science. I don't know why I said this science. I'm not a scientist. Yeah, when uh, when I talk about shit, it's like um, I'll say. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but basically it's like, I don't understand how something works and I don't care how it works. Like a printer, like that's something that's so simple. And I, I kind of understand more how it works now, but like printers are so fucking weird. You know, it fucking, the computer sends it and a paper goes by really fast and a printer is like, okay, like, I could look up a YouTube video and be like, how exactly does a printer work? But I don't want to know. My mind's blown that a printer does what it does. I mean, even us sitting here talking, we know it's not perfectly real time. There's some lag. But we're 350 miles away. And it's like, and I'm I, in your room, and you're in my room. And I kind of get how that works, but the way that it works, the fact that it works, that makes no sense. That's mind blowing. It's like, where's the internet come from? Who the fuck is generating it? It's crazy. There, there's a cable that comes off this power line over here and comes into my house. And they have this box over here that shoots it out. Omnidirectional. And I have a password I put in so I can connect my laptop and my phone so I can talk to you across the country. And just like, okay. Like even with buttons, like, okay. So, if I type a one, I'm like, okay, that button's there. The computer knows this is a one. But then I hold down a button and press that same button, and it turns into an exclamation mark. And it's like, damn, it knows just because I'm holding down the shift button that, oh, okay, let's go to the <laughs> the other one. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, because like with every button, it's uh, uh, on and off one zero. But now it's like, okay, this one is being held, and it changes these other ones. It's like, that's weird, too. Whoever can and that's comes just up, hardware. It's crazy, man. Hardware is crazy. Software is crazy, but hardware is super crazy. I don't and, know. It's all crazy. And I, I over exaggerate how mind blowing the internet and stuff is. I mean, if you really think about it, it's pretty fucking strange. It's but very, the one that really blows my mind, and I wish somebody would sit down. If they, if I know somebody that knows this, I wish they would tell me how it works. And that's how Apple figured out. <laughs> How to charge your AirPods with Bluetooth. Mm. How the fuck do you send electricity through the air? That makes no sense. The only way I can figure out how to do it is some sort of like manipulation with magnetism. But if it's not that, I want to know that one. Because on the internet, obviously, there's some interconnectivity digitally. It's mostly global. And you tap into it. I don't know what the fuck that means. I was even explaining it. It's like, what does that mean? <laughs> but it, we've had it long enough that we can buy into that it's real and somehow right. it works for us. It has its <laughs> pros and its cons. Right. But no one can explain how you can send electricity through the air. Yeah, Bluetooth. And it doesn't miss its target. Like, if I tried to build it, my electricity would be going all over the place. 
Like yes. people are like, oh shit, I just got hit in the eye by Bobby's electricity. Right. Yeah, shit's crazy. Bluetooth in itself is crazy. You can have three Bluetooth items and you pick one and it goes to that one and you got yeah. a Bluetooth speaker now. <laughs> Dude, when we first got our first Bluetooth uh, DVD player, it blew my mind that I could connect my phone to it and play YouTube. That's so weird. And God bless Wendy. Uh, she put up with me. <laughs> but the funnest thing to do was to pull up in the driveway real quiet so it wouldn't alarm the dogs and they wouldn't bark and then cast my YouTube to it. Because <laughs> I knew she was watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I would come in. She's like, "You are so dumb. Look, you keep doing this. Why?" <laughs> I was playing a game one time, and luckily I wasn't in the middle of it. I was just about to start, and I don't remember what song it was. I'm, I'm gonna go with Gangsta's Paradise. So Gangsta's Paradise comes up YouTube on my, uh, on my YouTube screen, or um, on my uh, TV screen, and I go into Big's room and I say, "You listening to Gangsta's Paradise?" And he said, how'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, because apparently you accidentally connected it to my TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. But he was like, man, I knew I tried something. I did something because uh, the music, the, the video's playing, but the music wasn't coming through my phone. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's on my TV. It. I'm going to use Moggles right here. This is your phone. It receives information with no wires. And this thing that's receiving information with no wires sends this to your TV, your Bluetooth speaker, your car. And there's no there's no wires. Why wireless is weird. It's strange, but we treat it like it's normal. Cause right now I'm all wired up. If I take one of these if I take one of these out, then I no longer have a mic, and we're I'm we're all wired up. But it's possible that this could all be wireless. I could get wireless headphones, a wireless mic, and that that makes no sense. Like, how the fuck is it connected? Yeah, it's strange. Yeah, because my phone and uh, computer are not touching, but um, I do have an interface for my my mic, so that's all plugged in. But I mean. I don't know if you could get a wireless interface, so that would have to still plug into the laptop. But there's certainly wireless mics. Uh huh. Yeah, and man. I'm, probably, I'm pretty sure I probably could get like a Bluetooth dongle to plug into the back of the USB, and it would pick that signal up somehow. I'm sure there's some way to make everything wireless. It's like all this is taking place is going to be frozen in time forever, and nothing's even touching. I think one of the weirdest is what you brought up is the Bluetooth. I think you said headset that you or that you can charge through Bluetooth. It's like this thing is getting powered. It's getting juice. And it's not one of those things, I'm assuming, where you have to like lay your phone on top of it and it somehow charges. But it's wireless. It's Bluetooth. And it's sending juice. Like that makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can... Um... Like, still listen to music and charge them at the same time. That's so strange. And it's funny, because I remember sitting in the lab with uh, Jeff uh, two and a half years ago. And I was like, bro. Because we all put in our own headphones so we could all listen to our own music. Because everybody's music taste had an intersection uh, that was enjoyable. But it was a very small intersection, so it ran out real quick. Uh, so a lot of us uh, worked in the same room but had our own uh, earbuds in. And I was like, I love these wireless headphones. Because I can set my phone over there on charge and walk around this entire lab and still have good clarity of music. But the only thing I don't like is that I need two pairs. Because when it dies, I have no music while it's charging. I was like, that'd be cool if you could charge them and listen to them at the same time. And the most recent AirPods, I know they charge Bluetooth. But, I mean, with that being the case, I don't own them. I imagine you can charge them and listen to them at the same time. Yeah. Technology is weird. Life is strange, and times are getting stranger. And in these times, the best thing to do is pray. I was gonna say stay black. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, prayer works good too. Yes, prayer and uh, yeah, stay black and don't be whack. Boom. Hello. Oh.